Yes, so I'm out today with the Leica M10D and something's happening in town today. It's a big Brexit march. It's going to be the biggest one yet. Up to 100,000 people, maybe more than that. Yeah, a bit more. How about 700,000 people? Just, just over there. It's happening just, just, just behind me right there. What a perfect place to test out a discreet little camera. To be honest, it doesn't really matter. Most photojournalists are probably using DSLRs, but you know, tight space like this, don't really want to be carrying too big a camera around. Oh, but what is this discreet camera you're talking about? Well, it could be this, the new Leica M10D. The M and the D make it sound like the old film MD, which didn't have many features. In fact, it didn't even have a viewfinder. This has got a viewfinder, but no bells and whistles. No, no bells here, no whistles here, but it is the fastest camera that you ever use because of these. Even old Boris has changed his mind. All right, pistol fingers, but how do you focus quickly then? It's all about nailing that rangefinder focusing technique, and for me, mostly, I reset it to infinity before taking the next shot. Why? Because most subjects tend to move towards you, or about the same distance. If they're moving away from you, you're just taking pictures of somebody walking away from you, which is a bit boring, right? So yes, I'm only focusing in one direction, from far to near. If the subject is going this way, your focusing patch is going in the same direction. My thinking behind that is that when the focus patch is moving with the subject, in the same direction as the subject, it's easier to catch and get it in sync with the subject. Because when your subject is moving from far to near and your focusing patch is going from close up to far away, it's quite easy to miss that point where it's in focus because you're both going in opposite directions. And once you've passed that point and you're trying to rack focus and trying to catch up, that's the difficult part. I like that you managed to fit it on the postcard as well. Well, it's very fitting because, you know, little little protest for a little dick, you know? Right, let's talk about the features of the M10D. First of all, it doesn't have a screen. It's a digital camera without a screen. I mean, the screen seems like such an important thing to have for a digital camera, but once you know how to focus and take a shot, why do you actually need a screen? At first, it's quite an odd sensation when you're taking that photo. <laughs> you look onto the bag and there's nothing to see. No chimping, but that's a good thing. You kind of get used to it. You don't keep looking at your screen. You don't keep looking at, oh, have I taken a nice, have I got the composition right? Now you have to get it right first time, all right? Yes, you could tape up your screen. Yes, you could say, I'm not gonna chimp every time I take a shot. Probably doesn't work out that way, but with this, you really are more fixated on just taking the photo and what settings you're using. But you know what, if it really bothers you that much and you've just bought the car and you realize, oh, I actually need a screen, just switch it to Wi-Fi mode, connect it to your phone, use a screen as, as to change your settings. You can even have it as live view. Brilliant, That that's ergonomically a, a brilliant setup. You can use the app to change settings like white balance and change it to JPEG. Whatever that means, why bother? DNG, that's all I need. You'd be happy to know that this next feature is something that they've actually added to the camera rather than taken away from it. But it's going to split opinions just like the screen because this digital camera without a screen has a film advance lever. Sorry, you what? I have to say, when I first saw this film advance lever that doesn't actually advance anything, I was. A little bit surprised, a little bit disappointed because I wanted to recock the shutter so that you take the photo and every time you have to recock the shutter by winding it on. But actually it kind of does make sense as just an ergonomic lever because whenever I use my film like this, I would always mess about with that film advance lever. I would always have my thumb resting on it. That I'm kind of fiddling about with it. It just feels great. It feels like it's meant to be. Even though it's a digital camera, even though it's very postmodern, there is really no purpose in terms of practicality, functionality. 
I like it. As silly as it sounds. Don't knock it. Don't knock it until you try it. So in terms of the actual innards, it's pretty much the same as the M10, M10P. So it's got the same silent shutter. It's, it's pretty damn silent. It's the most silent shutter yet. On the Leica M, digital M. In terms of resolution, in terms of megapixels, no change over the M10 and M10P, but just got to love that Leica image processing and those DNG files, and they're pretty robust. I purposely underexposed this shot to see what I could get by pushing it three and a half stops. It's quite impressive the details you can pull out of the shadows, not blow the highlights while keeping it looking natural. Half the time I was filming myself using rig where I had it mounted to the base plate and then the action camera pointing this way, but at this point it kind of loosened up a bit so I was kind of holding it in place. But at this point I was just enjoying shooting with the M10D, just looking through that nice big crisp viewfinder and taking shots whatever I could see through that viewfinder. And unfortunately because of parallax error, because the viewfinder's here and the lens is here, what I saw through here was not the rig which was actually in the shot. This is a camera for purists, not tech heads. I mean, surely there are gonna be posh people who are gonna buy this and take pictures of their yacht and don't need a chimp because they know what their yacht looks like. But for the most part, the kind of person who enjoy using the M10D is somebody who wants a Karen that is as much a part of the process of taking the shot as it does keep the hell out of the way. absolutely adore this camera, yet at the same time I'm not completely obsessing over it while I'm ready to shoot. Yeah, another reason to love this camera is there's not much to talk about. This is going to be one of the shortest reviews ever. But another thing I like about this, clutching at straws, this thing on the back. That's the switch on, but also you've got your exposure comp. Back in the old days I'd be using a Leica M2 with Sunny 16 rule basically. Sunny 16, so sunny day like this. ISO 100, shutter speed 100, or ISO 200, shutter speed 200, 200 a second. Obviously Aperture F16, hence the name, but this is the best way of figuring out exposure in lieu of a light meter. But you don't have to use F16, you could use F8, you just have to compensate with the shutter speed or the ISO. And basically if you move into shadows, then you'd open up the Aperture Stop or shutter speed slower by a stop. Really one more also doing today is because the ISO dial is you kind of have to lift it up and then set it. I'm just setting the ISO. Basically I'm using it similar to the Sunny 16 rule because that's quicker. The metering system is quite old fashioned on a Leica. And with this exposure comp, instead of changing shutter speed or the aperture, I can just flick that switch. Bam, easy. It feels just like the old film cameras. I guess that's the whole point of Leica M10D is to, that it just feels exactly like the old film days. It's not only the same size, similar kind of quietness, but also in terms of use. It comes in at the same price as the M10P, which is 8K USD, 700 more than the M10. I'm not saying you'll get more for your money, that much is obvious. But like a sports car where you pay more for less creature comforts because it's called Legera, you can only justify that extra cost through the feeling you get from it. And in all honesty, as much as it doesn't make sense at all, I've not been this infused to use a camera like the M10D for a long time. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and the little photos to go along with it. Please subscribe and tickle that like button. See you again. Bye bye.